Hey guys, it has been a hot minute, but I'm back. I'm back with the uh, video card series. Which video card series, you ask? Well, we just finished one, and we are in the midst of another, and it is that latter one where I am building my own video card that we're picking back up with this week. You probably need a reminder where I was when we were working last time, and basically what I managed to do was I put in, in the very first video, some muxing hardware to turn a 16-bit wide memory interface into 4-bit pixels. After that, I spent a lot of time using my little thin blue Kynar wires to attach one of the two dual-port SRAM chips that we're going to use for this project to actually store the video data. Then finally, in the very last one that we did, I actually took a CPLD, soldered it into the board, wrote a little bit of hardware description language, and got it working somewhat. We at least got some color bars on the screen. So, I think we should just jump right into it, because this time around it's going to get a lot more exciting, and we are going to actually attach the video addresses that our CPLD should be more or less counting up correctly, or at least at the right frequency. And we're going to attach those to the memory and start actually spitting out like some video. This one for once, um, I, I thought it was a bit of a headache, but uh, things kind of went more or less without a hitch. There was a bit of a hitch, we'll see it, or rather you won't see it for reasons of it's boring, but mostly things went fine. It felt like it took forever, but like I actually shot this in a week and got this knocked out inside of a week, so pretty good considering how things have gone on this channel. So that's that. I think that's all the introduction we need this time around. Let's jump into making a video card. Do some video! So here's where we were last time. Basically, we got this CPLD more or less figured out after a bunch of struggling. And as you can see on the screen, we have a signal. It's 512 by 256. Not the final resolution we're going to go for, but because of some design decisions I made over here early on, um, this is what we have based on our memory constraints. To recap, the basic setup is that I have a CPLD over here, which is the brains of the whole operation, and I'll get back to that in a moment. Then these two chips are each 16K by 16-bit dual-port SRAMs. The dual-port bit means that there are two address and data buses on each of these chips, which can be accessed completely independently at the same time. Finally, over here, since each of these chips is 16 bits wide, we have a section that multiplexes each of those 16 bits down into a 4-bit output. Backing up to the CPLD, last time we got the basic video timing working and the horizontal and vertical sync signals coming out on these pins. These pins right now are each just stepping through being on in turn. So it's going, you know, this one, this one, this one, this one, being on. That we will eventually use to drive the multiplexing segment through this input here. But at the moment, what you're seeing is the direct output of those signals on the screen going through this very simple digital to analog converter. The signal's pretty wobbly, probably mostly due to the fact that I have no decoupling capacitors on here or anything. It's very noisy. But basically, for today's video, what we're going to try and address is the fact that there is nothing coming out of RAM yet. As it turns out, we're actually pretty close. These are actually the wrong polarity right now. As you can see, they're turning on each of these red, green, and blue channels in turn, which is actually a positive digital signal, so they're going from 0 to 5 volts each time they turn on. The input to this multiplexing stage is actually inverted logic. So with what we have right now, every group of four bits that this multiplexer multiplexes between would be on and fighting for the bus by default. Then, as soon as one of these pins turned on, only that channel would turn off and be disconnected from the output. The first thing we need to do is go over and invert the logic for these. That's going to be pretty simple. We just have to insert some exclamation marks in the code, and then we should be right back here 
<laughs> with no video. And power on. No video. That's to be expected. So what are we supposed to do now that we can't see these? Well, we can assume they're running right, since they're just the inverted version of what they already were. But to make things a little more clear, I am going to pop out the logic analyzer. Hey, there we go. Okay, yeah. Here's a really good capture, if I get my hand out of the way. But you can see basically what's going on here is that horizontal sync happens, which means this is the transition between two frames, and then our video turns on, which is the multiplexer, and as we can see, they're going low. So it's normally high, and then we go, it's starting here at this one. And so it's going low, 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 and then Presumably this one would also be going low right in this slot. That one must not be connected correctly. Let's see. Yeah, I think I was off by one pin. There we go. Okay, so we can see a good pattern here. It goes this one, this one, this one, this one. So it enables that channel, that channel, that channel, that channel. So if we plug this into our multiplexer, we should at least get regular garbage out of the memory if we hold the memory address state. So one thing I definitely know that I got incorrect is that um, the MUX should change on every clock, right? Because these represent the individual pixels. These should change on every pixel. So I'll definitely have to make a change to that later on. But for now, let's dump some memory. That's the multiplex signals going across to the multiplex select inputs. And I've forgotten which colors are on which pins. Give me a second. Okay, back on track. I think. That should be something. <laughs> Let's turn it on. <laughs> There's a thing I forgot. I got a little ahead of myself. As you can see, I'm just running my fingers along here and because there is nothing driving the inputs to these. So they will just take on all kinds of values since they're floating. This is fun, but the first thing I need to do is hit output enable on these chips so that I actually have something driving this bus here going into the multiplexing stage. Let me get the test harness again. We have the test harness hooked back up now. So the whole scheme is multiplex signals are going from the CPLD into these chips used for multiplexing. Those are being fed by the left side of the dual port SRAMs, and currently nothing is hooked up to the right side of the dual port SRAMs except for control signals and the address. So it's a whole bundle of wires, but all you really have going on here are address lines. These are all tied to ground just for testing purposes. These are the CPU side address and the video side address. And then you just have the control signals, which there are a handful of, but 
not really a lot of important ones. Which means that all of these control signals are common except for the chip 1 and chip 2 chip select on the left side and the same on the CPU side. Right now, everything is disabled on the CPU side. We're not reading, we're not writing. And the same story over here. And if we power up our monitor and apply power to our system here, we're gonna get what is actually just garbage, just like before. But if we select one of these chips on the video side and hit output enable, you'll see when I touch those pins, it doesn't do anything because this is actually driving the bus now. This is fun. We're actually seeing what is in RAM right here. And I can kind of prove that by disabling this chip and then hitting the other chip select on the video side to select the other chip and we get all yellow. And again, can't, can't upset that because it's stable because there is actual current being driven into the MUX chips. So that is very cool. Our next step is let's start by maybe fixing those timing issues. And once we have that fixed, I think I am ready to build something to drive the CPU side of this. Oh, these finicky little bastards. Okay, so that's configured around. So we should get one color, another color, another color, and another color. Uh, should be a red, green, a blue, and a darker shade of one of those. I'm not sure what I plugged into. But let us write this and read it back out on the screen. Right and output. What's the story with this blue then? Hey, there's a blue. Okay, so that actually looks right now, now that I figured out that blue. Um, it was just not plugged into the right spot, and I think it was just plugged into an empty hole on there. But check that out, check that out, check that out. Um, we wrote on one side and we read on the other side, and I have repeated myself a bajillion times, but I am just so glad that this is mostly working tonight. <laughs> For starters, I'm actually not sure off the top of my head if it's a timing issue with the muxes themselves, but the way they're written, I think what it is is more likely actually a issue with the counting for the address itself. What I'm thinking I might want to do is actually extend the address counter by a few bits, and then I can truncate and send out the higher order bits to the actual physical memory addresses and use the lower order bits for the muxing. Oh, also here's a note. Uh, as it stands, I remember doing this last time, we were just lazily always adding one to the video address and just letting it roll over. Um, that actually should still be fine for now because uh, if our video address is exactly as big as we have pixels, which 512 by 256 should I think be the exact amount. So yeah, that's that same number, that 131 blah blah blah. So, 512 by 256 is exactly that, which is exactly our addressable range on our chips. So, letting that roll over is fine. I just have to make sure our video address counter is exactly that wide, which I believe is going to be, there are, I think, 14 address lines, and I'll, I'll do the math here to make sure this makes sense. 14 address lines, then another for the chip select, so that's 15, and then two more for the mux count. So I think that's 17 address lines. So let's do two to the 17. Yeah, that is, that is good. So we need 17 address lines. Later, we'll probably bring this back in because it'll get a little more hairy because I do want to change the way the output works. In that case, I'll, I'll have a video mode that's just under 640 by 480. I'll probably remove a few lines, but that will mean it will not wrap nicely and fit into being a power of two like this. For now, let's start by changing this to being 17 bits wide. Then let's see, this is already, this is the low order video address bits. So this should already be good. This should be counting at the pixel rate, but the video address is not going at the pixel rate. We actually want the video address to be counting at the pixel rate now because we're just gonna throw away some of those lower order ones. So what is that even called? Clock 25 megahertz, where is that? Yeah, this guy. Okay, so now that's gonna be going way faster, but 
we're going to change how our video address is connected to everything else. We need to extend it here in the signature for this. That's getting exposed to the other modules. Um, in the wrapper, I can just specify just the top bits going to the external pins. Let's just go and do that right now. In the outside world, we're still just going to have 13 down to zero, but we are going to connect that video address 13 down to zero to the cores 16 down to three. So I think this is more right. I'll burn this. We're not going to have the video address or the chip enables wired up yet, though I think they'll be right-ish now. But just for starters, we should at least be able to see that the video mux is uh, doing one pixel per row or one pixel per column. Okay, hopefully this is framed this time so that you can actually see some of the stuff down here. In goes the chip and then we shouldn't have to change anything. It should be good to go. All we did was change timing. So let's fire it up. Hey, look at that. A little bit noisy, but it looks otherwise pretty much right. There's kind of a fat red band here that I don't know if you can see so much. I don't know if that's artifacting from just this monitor being this monitor and this resolution not being its native resolution. Not sure, especially because it looks really fuzzy on that edge. But check that out. That looks pretty good. I would estimate those being individual pixels. This also might just be, yep. Yeah. yeah, it's just a, this power supply has, it's just a bad connection, frankly and I get bad grounding here. So let me try and screw around with that a little bit. Yeah, there's still some noise there, but pretty much all of that noise is pretty much due entirely to uh, bad grounding, but still. So that is promising. For fun, let me just do some more writing crap to memory because like I can, then that's fun. This is completely disconnected now again, as you can see. Um, the pattern I'm gonna write is just all on, all off, all on, all off. So we should just get kind of banding across the screen. So if I write to this chip, all right, just enabled the chip and write was already enabled. So that should be written now. And then turn the display on for this side. There you go. It may be hard to see on the camera. I don't know, but we basically have a pixel of that yellowish color and then a black pixel yellow, and uh, that kind of jail bars all the way across the screen. Still a lot of noise, which is lame. What you gonna do? But I guess we're kind of ready to start attaching address lines. What do you say? Let's do it.
Now, I do not actually need any of the left-hand side control signals anymore because those are hardwired, so I can just get rid of that, which is fun. As well, I now only need one set of address lines because the other ones are coming from the CPLD now for the video, so all I need is CPU side now, so gone. So now I just have video side address, video side control, and of course my fakey data bus. One thing I found out when I was playing with this earlier is this socket snapped um, in this corner. When I was originally trying to get a chip out of here for the first time because the socket was so tight it wasn't you know worn in yet. And it turns out that that is just enough for me to lose contact with the topmost pin which is one of the data bus pins going into the CPU side of the memory. So that's just a thing to be known. I need to figure out a way to, I don't know if I can just super glue that back together under pressure with the world's tiniest clamp. We will have to find out, but that is a bummer that I can probably resolve. Anyway, wiring. If my Galdern friggin' sync lines will even plug into this, gah. There, all I had to do was just swear it a little bit. That should be that. Let's fire this guy up and see what we get. I expect we should get like some video because we haven't really screwed with any of the video output stuff too bad and we didn't change anything on the muxes so should do something let's see okay <laughs> that's interesting oh that looks wonderful in the camera it actually might look better in the camera than it does in real life um, it looks a little fuzzier on the screen. For some reason, it almost looks sharper on the camera. But yeah, it's not complete nonsense. I don't really know what's going on here. Um, could be, my first thought is maybe, like, my address counting is just off enough that, like, every frame we're kind of shifting over a pixel and it's not getting reset properly. Oh! Oh! I had a dingus moment! I, I hope I threw some title stuff up on the screen before like I usually do because we just tied video to clock 25 megahertz, didn't we? Didn't we? We just tied the address counter to that. I think we're always counting the address. I think that's what's up. Could not be, but that strikes me as like the most obvious dingus thing I would do. And when it's me, you know, you know, expect the obvious dingus thing. Yeah, because I mean, you can see right here, like I don't even need to zoom in. Um, these lines mean a change in value on this bus. So it's changing every single time. It shouldn't start changing until down here. You know, a few pixels inboard of where video starts again after the sync. Let's forget which way this goes. That seems right. Right about now would be the time to place your bets on the monstrosity, ladies and gentlemen. Let us apply power. Oh, it's a miracle. Check it out. It is actually staying still now. That is pretty dang sweet. And we know that it's switching back and forth between the chips because of the logic analyzer. We know the address is counting through all the addresses, presumably. Um, doesn't really look like we have a repeat there, even though it's, you know, it's always hard to tell with this kind of randomosity. So, 
I think the last thing to do now before I go to bed for the night, because this is one of those times where I've just been putting in like an hour a night and seeing where I can get. Um, but I would like to try writing a bit from the uh, CPU side into here, and we should at least see a couple pixels there. Probably gonna have to zoom way up on it, but um, I can play with it, so let's do it. I already got a value put in here, so all I should need to do is, I'm set to write. I just got to enable a chip. Okay. I, I think that did something I wasn't really looking. That is definitely different, but I will, I'm gonna try and look at the screen while toggling the uh, chip enable for the other chip. Let's see if I can watch it happen. Oh, 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 I watched it happen this time. That's dope. Okay, I'm gonna see how close I can bring you in with my crappy camera setup and see if I can show you the same thing. That's exciting. This kind of works. You're now sitting directly on top of my monitor where the pixels look better than they do in person, much brighter and full of color. Okay, so this is two consecutive words of memory. Each word is four pixels. Uh, I hope my nails aren't too gross. They're probably pretty gross. And so that means eight pixels total. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so that green pixel is not our pixel. I was gonna say that might be uh, it just stopped filming because my battery is dying. So let me see if I can put something in really quick for you and then let you see a pixel change before it dies again. Okay. Well, I, I, I shorted things. Shite. Well, okay, that's kind of good. That's kind of good. Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm going to break it right in all my excitement. Why is that happening? Okay, never mind. Since I shorted it and blew out memory right there, uh, let's just, I'll write the pixel that was already there. Before the battery dies, uh, uh, wish us luck. Oh, you just saw that, so I wasn't looking at the screen, but those wrote. Now, damn it, stop dying, Omni Camera. I said, let me write the other four. There they are. You'll just have to believe me that that was not finagled off screen to, to work in my favor. It works. I can write to my video as it displays. That's so good. Oh, the dual port nature is really showing its power. Okay, I am clearly too zazzed for the night. Tomorrow, I am going to come on back. What, where are you? Where are you? I'm going to come, come on back, and I am going to, I think, hook up an AVR to some shift registers or something to, like, manually dump a bunch of stuff into here. Stay tuned! All right, what is this absolute madness? I spent today uh, basically building up this little thing which is really just a serial shift register kind of setup, but it's made out of two AVRs because I have a bunch of D flip-flop chips sitting around that work okay for a serial in shift register, but then I need a synchronous output, which those don't have. And they're not shift registers, they are you know decoupled completely separate input and output on each D flip-flop, but uh, with a common clock, most of the 74 series chips I have that do that which the number is escaping me off the top of my head. Anyway, I have a bunch of those. It'd be a pain in the butt, and I would need to add more on the output to be able to synchronously swap them over. All right, so I need to cut a little bit here and maybe do some mid-roll explaining. I got the video timing coming out of the CPLD roughly correct. I got the address lines hooked up properly to the RAM. Kind of first try, everything was looking okay. And uh, we were getting some video out one way or another. And then I decided to build this really dumb two AVR driver board system. No, I thought it would be so much easier just to take these two AVRs and create this crazy master slave thing where, I mean, frankly, I probably could have just used SPI too or something equally built in and easy. But if you've been watching this long enough, you know that is not my way to do things the easy and obvious route first. Okay, it's happening. I am ripping out all of my data inputs. This might be, nay, nay, this 100% is <laughs> the most janked up thing I have yet assembled. <laughs> That's a thing that looks somewhat sensical, even. Well, I'm gonna let this run. In the meantime, I am going to, uh, 
heck on a little piece de resistance for this. Needless to say, that did not end up being the easiest way to go. Oh my god, why doesn't it work? It's 1.30 in the morning, and I think I might have to give up for a second. And I just ended up, after a lot of things just not working right, it's the morning, I'm back, I'm fresh. I did some looking at the code I was trying to run on the AVR. Okay, let's yank the programmer and see what it do. Uh, you can't tell, but it seems to just be overwriting <laughs> random, random ass areas of memory. Finally just built that circuit that I should have in the first place, and after wasting a day trying to get those AVRs to work, straight up throwing spaghettis at the wall here. It basically worked first try with the flip-flop circuit. All right, I should have stopped. I should have stopped a long time ago, but... <laughs> I'm stopping now. I built a new thing. It's it's nighttime now. I wasted another whole day doing this thing. <laughs> I hope you like it. This is just four 74 574s. They're eight wide ganged flip-flops, so they have a common clock, but there's eight ins and outs. Two of them are acting as a shift register, and then two of them are acting as a latch so that it changes synchronously. Oh boy. Um... I still have issues, but I'm calling it. It was definitely something about the crazy address crap with the 2AVR thing. Whatever. Anyway, you want to see something nice? I'll show you something nice. I just reprogrammed this thing, so... You know how it goes. It's probably going to completely bung itself up just because I changed some little thing. But, fingers crossed. Power on. Hey, No, that was beautiful. There you go. It's, you can see I <laughs> tried to do some debugging, made a little matrix counting column lines to try and figure out why on earth those columns were so crazy mangled up, but I, it, it was just that being crazy flaky. I have an off by one error here. This is actually the first uh, column of four pixels, and I, I obviously it's an off by one issue, but damned if I know what it is. So. I'm going to call it there because this was just a stupid, it's just supposed to be a stupid demo. And I, I mean, I eventually got it, but look at it, look at it, look at it. I'm going to bring it down here. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Oh, I'm going to stop now. <laughs> Come take a closer look though. So obviously, let me see if it's able to get any better focus. Ugh, gross nails. Um, you know, you can kind of see these blue lines here and these yellowish lines here, and that's because that one line that doesn't connect very well. And so we're we're a bit off there. Um, I'll figure out what that is. It's it's really not, I'm sure, anything to do with the video hardware. Um, I mean, who knows? It could be. Um, I, I don't know. I'd have to futz around some more, and I will. But I'm going to cut back to me, because... Look... Look, one bit dithered imagery on a home built video card. That's all that's all I wanted. That's all I wanted. I can be free now. I don't know if it comes across in that video enough because I haven't really reviewed the footage. This is so cool. So you may, if you've watched any of my other videos and you've been following for a little bit, know that for a previous computer that I built, that this is kind of the second iteration of, I built a video card for that as well. And the thing is with that video card, I actually didn't do much graphics programming with it. And I never ever dumped an image to it. I got it showing the kind of static that you see if you go back and watch my 6816's SBC overview video. And then a while later, when things were looking kind of stable with it, I started writing some code to try and do kind of bitmap fonts on it, which are, you know, pretty easy to implement. But that was a, a huge headache at the time, and I didn't have much time to devote to it. And that's about as far as I got, is like I printed an A on the screen, and then that was it. So I can't tell you how cool it is. I know this is not the most fancy thing, and people on FPGAs build, you know, simple little VGA image generation circuits and stuff all the time. But I have never actually generated an image like this before. So very stoked. And now there's a couple different directions that I can take this. 
One is what we need to do is obviously this 512 by 256 resolution is not ideal and it's not what I want to go with. I kind of did some miscalculating at the time. Um, those two memory chips are, they're freaking expensive. I can't remember. It's not crazy, crazy, but for buying chips, it's fairly crazy. Uh, I believe each one of those was like 20, 25 bucks per chip. Like I spent $50 just for those two SRAMs and I only bought two because I was spending 50 bucks just on a couple of chips. And that was crazy in and of itself. Even though that's proven to be such a godsend in like the way that I can just dump data into there. That's another reason why I didn't get that far with the other video card was the, the access from the video side and the CPU side just not working quite right all the time and just, oh, it was a nightmare. Anyway, <laughs> the issue there is that I only have 64K bytes of RAM to deal with there, and there's only so much you can do with 64K. We have this weird 512 by 256 resolution because for some reason, when I started building that muck section at the very beginning, I like had all of my math off by like a bit position and thought that I could get away with four bit color like on 640 by 480, which <laughs> you can run the math yourself there. It, it does not work. So that's why we dropped down to this resolution, but I'd still like to do something similar. So, as I've said before, I'd like to kind of redo the MUX section. We'll keep the MUX, but I want to introduce using a few of those 8-bit flip-flops that are the same kind that I actually used for the uh, driver card here that we built this time on the breadboard, and actually use those as color registers. So we'll do 2-bit color, which will give us double the number of pixels that we have here, and allow me to like remap the colors on the fly, then we could still not quite go up to 640 by 480, but I think we could do something like 640 by 400 or possibly 640 by 420. I can't remember what the number I came up with is. It's really easy, but I'm, I'm not gonna do it right now. Then the other thing that I really want to do is like actually drive this card with a computer, maybe? I'm not sure which one of those I'll do first, cause like right now, obviously I can slap almost anything on this bus interface and get pixels written to the thing real easy. So an upgrade to this, you know, kind of standalone AVR driver board would be really easy, but I have to decide how to do it because I haven't built the computer that this goes to yet. So I can't use that. There's the thought that maybe I could, you know, use the 65816 single board computer to drive it, which would be pretty satisfying. Or I could do something crazy, like try and interface it to an ISA bus, which gets weird. And I, I really don't know how the ISA bus like memory space ends up looking or if there's enough free space to shove 64K in there um, on like a normal machine, like this, this Pentium I have sitting in the corner. I don't know. Either way, very excited, but I need to preface this all with the fact that as I do usually, I kind of interleave my stuff and I'm gonna do another old computer video next. What I'm thinking is I'll do kind of a quick teardown of the SGI personal iris 4d 25 i think it is that i have those are pretty cool machines because they are some of the earliest workstations sgi did that weren't like the huge cuboid desk sides though they're kind of i think they might predate any of those and you know they're not quite as far back as their earliest earliest machines because they used to have boxes that just you'd hook it up to a mini computer and it was basically just graphics hardware that you attach to another computer system. But it's kind of between the SGI systems you know and love and the most ancient of ancients. So it's a cool box and I would love to share it. And I got it for free, <laughs> which never happens anymore with that kind of stuff. So I want to share that with you. But until next time, thank you so much for coming in, spending some time with me, hanging out in my messy lab, if you want to call it that, and watching me struggle, which I think is kind of maybe what I should change the channel name to is, is watch me struggle at trying to achieve basically childhood dreams with my electronics and stuff, trying to build my own computers and, uh, you know, trying to have the big iron that I couldn't have ever afforded when I was a kid at the time. It's a lot of fun to be able to share this stuff, and I cannot wait to see you guys in the next one. See ya! Uh, oh, there's stuff in the way! Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Just, it's fine. It's fine. Oh, man, I don't want to reshoot that. You guys have been waiting a really long time for a new one. So, that is what it is.